This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Envato provides a huge library of creative assets such as graphic elements and templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, fonts, and much more. On top of that, it offers unlimited downloads with an affordable subscription. So if you're interested, I have provided a link down below in the description, which will take you to their website. And of course, if you do decide to register, I get to earn a commission. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be creating car company logo animations using Illustrator and After Effects. Take a look. Audi. Volkswagen. As we all know, there's so many car brands out there, but I wanted to pick a few that had interesting elements that would allow us to explore different kinds of techniques. And as you saw, the three I ended up with are Audi, Ferrari, and Volkswagen. I've previously covered a bunch of other logo animations in this series, as well as a couple of car related tutorials that feature Mercedes and BMW. So do check those out whenever you have the time. Also, if you want to dive deeper, you can get this tutorials project files on my Gumroad page, along with a bunch of other stuff, as they're mostly using the pay what you want system, so you can get them for free while still having the option of supporting the channel with a donation. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. When it comes to doing work that involves Illustrator and After Effects, a third-party paid tool I can't go without at this point is Overlord. It allows for a seamless transferring of layers between the two programs. It's not necessary if you want to follow along with this tutorial, as you can import Illustrator files in After Effects and set them up that way, but I highly recommend you check it out, especially if you often use Illustrator hand-in-hand -hand with After Effects, as it does speed up your workflow tremendously. After we find the original SVG files, we first want to clean them up in Illustrator before sending them over to After Effects for animation. Links to everything mentioned in this video will be provided in the description. For our first car, we find ourselves in Germany. He has a spaceship. With Audi, I know I want to animate the rings individually, but there are a couple of problems. First, I noticed the way the logo was set up with gradients in Illustrator would cause problems when sent over to After Effects because the gradients weren't behaving properly. And second, because the original logo design contains these cutouts at each intersection between the rings, which I want to introduce at the end of the animation, means that I need to select the ring layer, then go to File, Export Selection, set the scale to about 1000 pixels, and export it as a PNG with Alpha. Bring that into After Effects and create four copies so I can lay them out accordingly by using the original logo as reference. Real quick, here are the composition settings we're going to be using across all three logo animations. Let's now create a solid to use as a mat in order to cut out the rings at each intersection by creating masks, duplicating them, and flipping them over to the other side until every part is covered, and finally parent each mat to its corresponding ring layer so they follow along once we start animating. We'll now bring over the Audi letters with Overlord, which you can do by selecting the layers you want to transfer and click push selection to AE. If the split shapes to layers option is not checked, then all layers will be transferred as a single shape layer with multiple groups, whereas if the option is checked, then each layer will be brought over as its own layer, which is what we want in this case, and as you can see, the beauty of Overlord is that it retains hierarchy and names. Let's shut off the letters visibility and disable the ring cutout mats so we can focus on the rings animation. We'll center the rings vertically and set a keyframe for the position of each ring, then select all rings and hit Control Home to center them to the comp. This way, we can easily push each ring outwards by the same amount to get a symmetrical shape that represents a wheel. Now let's create a null object, parent the rings to the null, and animate the null's rotation to get this counterclockwise spin. I want the rings to spin around the null, but maintain their original rotation, even while parented, so let's all click on the rotation of one of the rings and write the simple expression value minus parent dot transform dot rotation. And to save ourselves some time, we can copy the expression only and paste it to the rotation property of the other rings. Let's animate the null scale to have the rings scale up from the center of the comp, as well as animate their individual scales to have them come in one by one, each shifted in time by a few frames. We can then shift the position keyframes of the rings and also tweak their arcs to have them transition into their final position with a sort of circular motion as if to have some follow through from the null's rotation. Let's now re-enable the cutout mats, trim their endpoints, set a keyframe for the masks at their final position, and then set an initial frame by double-clicking and holding down shift 
to scale the masks down proportionally. This way the rings are whole at first and only get cut out at the end. For the letters, I want them to quickly fade in and move in from the left, starting from first letter to last. For better readability, we can create specific shapes to use as mats for the last three letters by either duplicating original letters and modifying them, or creating basic new shapes and parenting the mats to their corresponding letters in order to get better separation as they come in one after the other. Here's with and without using mats. Now let's parent the letters to the rings null so we can center the logo as a whole all the way at the end, enable motion blur, and we get... Audi. Moving on to the land of Italy. Okay. Same as before, we'll open the original SVG file in Illustrator and it's a mess. Mamma mia. We'll start by selecting all layers that make up the horse and click Ctrl G to group them and rename the group to horse. Let's now rename, reorder and group the letters as well, organize the background colors and outline and finally delete any unnecessary layers. Once everything is set up, we can send them over to After Effects with Overlord. To start off, we'll duplicate the outline layer, rename it to base and delete the inner mask in order to get a filled in shape. This will make sense in a moment. Let's now parent each layer to the outline layer and animate the outline to come in from the bottom by inputting three keyframes. The third at its final position, the second overshooting upwards just a little bit and the first keyframe just a bit off screen at the bottom and together with some easing, we're able to get this bouncy animation. I often prefer to animate in reverse so I can more easily set the poses so to say and only then dial in the details, which usually saves me a lot of time. Better than a Ferrari, huh? No. Also, at certain parts while I'm animating, I like to disable specific layers so I can focus and work faster. So for the next step, I'll disable the Ferrari letters and horse in order to pay attention to the background colors. We'll animate the path of both the base and outline layers to be stretched towards the bottom and have them slowly settle back to their original shapes. This way, we're able to adjust the yellow, red, white and green colors so they too are stretched downwards, but then use the base layer as an alpha mat to isolate the background colors to the base shape of the logo. Let's now animate their position so they come up from the bottom, each shifted in time by a few frames, filling up the logo little by little. The other use for the base layer is that it fills in the gap left by the background colors and it kind of gives the impression of tire marks. Also, you can very briefly notice the Italian flag. Holy. <laughs> Look at that. Let's re-enable the horse and set its track mat to the yellow color so it's only visible within the contours of that layer. Afterwards, making sure to re-enable the yellow color because by default, whenever you assign a layer as an alpha mat, it gets disabled. We'll set the anchor point to the center of the bottom leg, animate the rotation so it seems like the horse is going from standing on four feet to standing on two feet and also animate its position to move upwards. Same for the letters, give them an upwards position movement and then we'll animate the path of the F letter to have it stretch until it reaches the other end and out of it forms the dot on top of the I letter, which we can do by toggling its visibility with a couple of opacity keyframes. Bellissimo! Back to Germany we go in a Volkswagen. For the concept I have in mind, I want the V and W letters and the outline to all be on separate layers. We'll start with the outline since that's straightforward. We'll make a duplicate by using Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl Shift V to paste in place. Now let's delete all inner parts, duplicate the circle, set both their opacity values to about 50% and then scale one of the circles down proportionally while holding Alt and Shift to roughly match the original. Let's bring the opacity back up to 100% and with both circles selected, go over to the Pathfinder tab and click on the minus front option to cut a hole in the middle. Now let's duplicate the original, name it W and we'll delete points we don't need, switch to the pen tool and we'll close the top side, then switch over to the shape builder tool and hold down Alt to minus the leftover top part. Finally, let's round out the top corners to match with the other corners. And we'll do pretty much the same for the V letter. Now let's turn everything on, set the original logo to 50% opacity and lock it so we can easily select the modified letter's top points and correct them, making sure to extend them slightly until the W letter covers the entire inner part of the circle as we move them up and down. This is necessary for the animation part, so let's now send them over to After Effects. First, we'll add a repeater on the V and W layer, Set it to four copies and under transform, we'll tweak the position by setting the X value to zero and then decrease the Y value until the copies are slightly separated. Now we'll animate the actual position to go upwards across two seconds or so and tweak the easing. 
Let's now use the circle as a mat to isolate the letters inside the logo, making sure to re-enable the visibility of the circle, because once again, whenever you assign a layer as an alpha mat, it gets disabled by default. And we end up with this sort of car driving forward and coming to a stop. Moving on, let's set the inner circle color to black, the letters to white, make a duplicate of the circle for later use, and then pre-compose the original circle and letters, leaving the outline untouched. You'll soon see why we're doing this. When you pre-compose shape layers, they normally lose their vector capabilities, so when you scale up the pre-comp, you'll notice it gets blurry. So to fix that, we can toggle the switches and turn on the continuously rasterize option. Now let's create a null object, parent everything to it, and animate it to scale up at the beginning. Move on to about the one second mark, create a new null, parent the first null to the second, and then animate the second null scale so it grows a bit more. Now let's take care of the color transition by adding a tint effect on the pre-comp and seeing as we set the circle to pure black and the letters to pure white, we can remap those to any colors we like by using the tint effect. In this case, for the inner circle, we'll eye drop the color from the outline. This pre-comp will be our white on blue, we'll duplicate it, rename it to blue on white and then click swap colors. We'll now use the circle mat to reveal the blue on white pre-comp by having it scale up just after the second null kicks in. Finally, we'll add one last null, parent the second null to it and then animate its scale to slowly go up across three seconds or so for some secondary motion. And the final animation is complete. Volkswagen. Alright guys, that was all for today's episode. You can check out other tutorials on the channel to learn more. Also, feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me through my socials and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Again, don't forget to visit my Gumroad page where you can find a bunch of project files from previous videos as well as from today's tutorial, mostly for free with the option of supporting the channel with a donation. Thanks for watching and being patient all the way through and I'll see you next time. Peace out.